What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through yet again some more AI. And as usual, this is really cool. Recently, as in a few days ago, a brand new 1.2 billion parameter text to video model was released. And you can download this and use it on your PC now. Previously, there was one before this that lets you generate short videos. And most, if not all of them, had a huge Shutterstock watermark as they were trained on Shutterstock videos. I assume they were nicely tagged and described. Anyways, there's a brand new 1.2 billion parameter model you can download and run on your own PC really easily. We'll get there in just a moment. Here is the LVDM page, Latent Video Diffusion Models for High Fidelity Long Video Generation. A mouthful. If we scroll down, you'll see some examples of exactly what it does. You can still see a bit of the Shutterstock watermark. Obviously, should you go through the extra effort, there are websites to remove watermarks from videos and text, so you could use things like that technically. But without getting into that too much, how do we download this and start messing around with it on our own PC? Well, that is really simple. All we need is the standard for text to image, image to image, etc., image generation, and that is Automatic 1111's Stable Diffusion. Now, this Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion web UI can be run on many different setups, Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. As for whether this works in CPU only mode, that I'm not entirely sure of, but assuming it does, you just need a handful of RAM and you should be able to run it. If you haven't already got Automatic 1111's Stable Diffusion Web UI installed, in the description down below you'll find a few guides on how to do so. When you have it installed, all you need to do is open up the folder where it's located and fire it up using the usual web UI user.bat. Having a look at web UI user.bat, you'll see my launch arguments here. I just have enabled Xformers, which should help speed up the process of generating images and probably videos too. I'd recommend trying to fire up the web UI using these arguments here at least, as it should help generation speed, etc. If it can't launch after these, just remove them and save the file. Anyways, should you choose, you can also update Automatic 1111s, which is probably a good idea, though just note that some updates do periodically break the program, meaning that it's a little bit difficult to use it. To update it, just open a new command prompt window by clicking in an empty spot at the very top, typing CMD and hitting enter, then we can run git pull. Upon typing in that, it'll pull any updates from the GitHub website, and shortly after, everything will be updated on our side. So I'll fire up the web UI here, and there's not much else left to do but navigate to the UI front end. All right, there we go, the web UI is now loaded. I'd recommend just waiting for all elements to load, such as the model picker up here, just so we know everything's running as it should be. All right, what you wanna do is head across to the extensions tab at the very top, then in here, head across to available, click load from, and when it's done, all we need to do is in the search bar here, type in text to, and you should see text to video, text to prompt. We want text to video, this one here. Simply click install, wait for it to complete. This could take a few seconds. And once it's done on the install tab, click apply and restart UI. Now, when we're back, you should see a text to video tab at the very top, but there's not much we can do just yet. We need to download either model scope or video crafter. Now that we have the extension installed, we can minimize and head to the stable diffusion web UI install folder. In the description down below, you'll find a link to this GitHub repo, SD web UI text to video. And in here we can scroll down where we'll see requirements. Model scope, the older version of this model, recommends 8 gigabytes of VRAM to run properly. You can generate 256 by 256 pixel videos, but they're getting reports of people being able to launch and generate videos at 192 by 192 pixels with as low as 4 gigabytes of VRAM, which is crazy. They link to an issue over here, or a discussion rather, where they talk about this, which is pretty cool. But this will generate 24 frame videos. These will most definitely fit into the 12 gigs of RAM on a 2080 Ti, which is pretty good. But the brand new model Video Crafter and requires around 9.2 gigs of VRAM with the settings on default, which I assume is 256 by 256. This is the interesting one here that you should be able to generate much longer videos. Scrolling down, we get some test examples of both model scope and shortly after Video Crafter. You can see the videos here sort of make sense. They look pretty good, but the Video Crafter model seems a bit more confusing. Anyways, where to get the weights, model scope and video crafter. 
Video Crafter is the new one. All we need to do is download via this link here or download the pruned half precision weights and put the model checkpoint in models video crafter model checkpoint. I assume the model dot checkpoint here should work just fine, but it's a 4.3 gig download. This one on hugging vase, however, is 2.33, the prune version. I'm pretty sure the only real difference is that the prune version can't be fine tuned. I'm not really going to be fine tuning this just yet, so I'll download the pruned version, the smaller one, by clicking the download button right here. Now this is going to take some time to download depending on the speed of your internet, and assuming you have a multi-threaded downloader, you can speed this up a ton. Alright, the download's done, so we'll put it in models video crafter models.checkpoint. So stable diffusion web UI, models, and video crafter. Because this doesn't exist, I'll hit Control Shift N to make a new folder and paste in video capital V crafter capital C, no spaces. We'll open it and then just drag the model checkpoint in from our downloads folder. Now, assuming you have less VRAM or want to just use model scope, there's two links here, an original and a half precision FP16 pruned weights, which is smaller and uses less VRAM on loading. Obviously, you'll use this second one if you have little VRAM, you won't be running Video Crafter at anything less than around 9 gigs of VRAM. For these, however, you need to download four specific files and put them in a different models folder, these four here. So here's the normal one, which is around 10, 16 gigabytes or so, and this one here is around maybe 7. Though you only need these four files here. All you need to do is download these last four files here, not README and not get attributes, you don't need those. When you do download them, place them in the web UI models folder, then model scope and T2V. So once again, the web UI folder, models, we'll make a new folder, model scope, capital M, capital S, no spaces, and inside of this T2V, or lowercase, no spaces. We'll be placing these four files in here that we download. Obviously, pick one or the other, or you can download both, should you choose. All right, there we go. There's all of the four files here. Nothing left to do but fire up Stable Diffusion Web UI. Once again, the text to video tab. We'll just wait for the model to load properly. When it does, I'll select maybe model scope to start with and we'll give it a prompt. Let's go with woman waving. We'll click generate and see exactly what happens. Now looking at my VRAM as well, you should see things changing here, but using a few gigs, obviously the time that it takes to generate this will usually be quite a bit. Now, as far as I understand, it needs to generate one image at a time, all the way up to 24 or however many frames. Yep, 24 frames, which should be around a second at 24 FPS. Anyways, we'll need to give this some time to run. Oh, never mind, that was actually pretty fast. Result save to followed by a path. We'll need to navigate across here, otherwise click here after the generation to show the video. We'll click here and this is the video. Okay, well it sort of got that there's a wave going on, but I assume it took waving as in wave in the ocean as well. Anyways, we got our response here. It does have the usual shutterstock watermark, but that's to be expected with these early text to video models. Let's go for video crafter and try the same thing, generate. Now, as far as I understand, this should take a little bit more time to complete and a lot more VRAM. Yep, definitely so. There's a huge jump in VRAM here, probably about double what the previous model used. Anyways, let's see what it pops out. Not to mention it is taking a little bit longer. There we go, 19.45 seconds. The previous one generated in doesn't say, but it felt to be about a minute. Anyways, update the video. Here's what we get. This is model scope instead. Okay, well, it's definitely a bit more confused. It caught the waving part, I suppose, and maybe a woman, but anyways, I suspect things could be improved quite a bit. Also, there's music on this for some reason. Not entirely too sure what that's there for, but let's give it 125 seconds, and let's go with woman walking instead. Generate. This one should take quite a bit longer to do. Oh, no, actually not too much longer. That's a pleasant surprise. Update, and here we go. Okay, well, not walking at all, but anyways. And as it turns out, recording while doing these graphics card heavy tasks can lead to the recording crashing 10 minutes ago, you not realizing and wasting a bunch of time. Anyways, the text to video tab, definitely very flaky with video crafter, but model scope seems to be somewhat accurate. The video to video tab over here, we can upload a video, for example, downloading one from Pixabay, royalty free. I'll download the 960 by 540 version, then this video of a tiger walking, I'll drop into 
the vid to vid tab here by dragging it in, give it a prompt and tell it to generate. Model scope did a really good job of generating a line walking slowly, at least compared to video crafter, which just seemed a little bit lost as to what it was supposed to be generating. But anyways, I think it maybe took the prompt from the text to video tab over here instead of video to video. But anyways, for the most part, model scope works really well. Video crafter is just starting its new to this. So maybe in the future, updates will be pushed, making it a bit better. But once again, we still are in the very early stages of using text to manipulate video through AI. As for image generation and image to image, things are incredible. So I'm assuming sometime in the future, hopefully soon, we'll have great text to video and video to video options. But for now, we are still very early and you'll definitely need to temper your expectations. That being said, it's fun to mess around with anyways, so hopefully you get something out of this video. At the very bottom, we can expand image to vid to expand an existing image as well, but I'll leave that for you to mess around with as I don't want my recording crashing again. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Hopefully you found it somewhat interesting. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.